In this video, I will cover everything you need to know about shortcut file transformations in Moxed Fabric. I will show you how to use this easy no-code way of transforming your data from an external location to a delta table format, all without the need to build any data pipelines. And I will also cover how it handles deleted files, changing file structure and what happens under the hood, and so much more. So stay tuned! Welcome to the video, my name is Alexia and I'm a data architect and a Microsoft Data Platform MVP. And on this channel I cover Moxed Fabric related topics. In this video we are going to take a look at shortcut file transformations that allow you to transform data from shortcut directly to a delta table in a lake house. But now without further ado, let's open up Fabric. Now we are in Fabric and I have this empty lake house open here. To this lake house I would like to create a shortcut from this Azure data lake where I have this one sales CSV file sitting. And if we take a look at the contents of this CSV file, we can see that we have an order ID, order name, customer ID, region, product, quantity, unit price and currency. And now I would like to use shortcut file transformations to process this CSV file directly to a delta table in this lake house. So let's set it up. And now let's start by creating a new shortcut to this lake house. And we are going to create that shortcut to Azure Data Lake and let's select that. And then we have to select the connection that we are using. I have already defined that connection and then we can click next. And now we are going to select the directory aka the container in that data lake that we're going to use. And we're going to use this shortcut transformations container. And in that container we can see that same CSV file that is there. And now we can click next. And now Fabric will automatically detect that we have a CSV file there and not a delta table. So it is telling us that now we need to use shortcut file transformations to process that CSV file into a delta table. And here we can control that transformation. So basically we we can choose what is the delimiter for that file, but of course now we had that comma, so we keep it as a default, and then we can select do we have a header in that file or not. And in our case we have a header. And now we can click next, and this will actually then allow us to rename the delta table that will come up as a result of this shortcut file transformation. And I will give it a name as sales, and let's select that. And now we have configured this shortcut file transformation, and we can click create. And this will now start to process that file that we have in that Azure data lake to this manage delta table in this lake house. Now, after a little while, we can see that now we have this sales table in this lake house, and we can check out how does the data in this table look. So we should have that CSV data now in a delta table format in this table. And here we can see that data, so we have those same columns that we had in that CSV file, and then we have also this one extra column that tells the file path from which this file was processed. But now this file is available as a delta table in our lake house and much more ready for analytical use cases than as a CSV file. And we can also see that some data types in this table have been already changed to their correct format. For example, this order date is as date type, and then we have this integer type for quantity, and the unit price is double. So this shortcut file transformation is actually able to change data types based on the incoming data. But this data type transformation can be actually problematic in some cases. If you have, for example, a very small subset of data that you are using first to process this initial load, then that data doesn't probably represent the whole data set that well. And this data type guessing feature can actually guess those data types wrongly. But now let's move forward. And as you can see, I have some more files here as well. So I have some sales files for the 2nd of September and for the 3rd of September. Basically here we just have more rows. And now I would like to drop these files to that same Azure data lake and see how does the shortcut file transformation will then process these. So let's go to Azure and then we want to upload more data to this storage and I'm going to select those files that I just showed to you and then we are going to upload. And now we have three files in this data lake and now the shortcut file transformation actually automatically processes these files to that delta table. And according to documentation, the shortcut file transformation logic will check this location every two minutes to see if there are any changes and then process those changes to that managed delta table. Now over two minutes have passed and let's refresh this sales table and let's see do we have some new rows here. And ta-da, we can see that we have new rows here. So we have those rows for the 2nd of September and then for the 3rd of September. 
And also, it is cool that this shortcut file transformation will also handle deleted files. So if we go here and for example delete the file for the 2nd of September and let's delete it, this shortcut file transformation should reflect that in the delta table. So let's wait again that roughly 2 minutes and let's see how does the data look. And now it has been over 2 minutes, so let's refresh our table and let's see how does our data look. And as we can see the rows for the 2nd of September are now gone. So the shortcut file transformation was able to reflect that deleted file in this delta table as well. So we are not showing the data that is no longer present in that Azure data lake. Before we continue with the video, I would like you to know that I spent ton of my free time creating these videos for you. And that's why I would like to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more Max Fabric content. This doesn't cost you anything and I would highly appreciate that. Also, you can join my YouTube channel as a member and get some exclusive perks like early access to many of my videos, members only videos, priority replying comments and much more. And another way of showing support is to buy me a cup of coffee by clicking the buy me a coffee link that can be found in the description. But now let's continue with the video. And now let's see how does the shortcut file transformation handle extra columns. So now I'm adding this promo code to the next file that I'm going to drop to that Azure data lake. So let's go back to Azure and upload more data and now I'm going to upload the file for the 4th of September and there we go and now it is there and then again let's wait roughly 2 minutes so that this file gets processed automatically. And now some time has passed and now I refresh the table and we can see that we have that row for that 4th of September but we don't actually have that new column there so we're not having that promo code there. So this shortcut file transformation was able to process that data but it basically just skipped that new column that I added to the end of the file. According to documentation schema drift is not supported in the shortcut file transformations at least not yet but it seems that it can handle these kind of basic cases cases where you have some new columns coming to the end of the file, which is a good thing. And by the way, there is a way to monitor these shortcut file transformations by opening up this manage shortcut tab here. And here we can see that we have these jobs that have been running on the background that are actually doing that processing for us. So basically this is starting Spark jobs on the background that will handle that data processing and process those CSV files to the Delta table. But for now you cannot see this shortcut file transformation job runs in the monitoring hub. So you cannot monitor these from there. But here you are able to see that did they succeed or not. Next let's remove one column from the data and let's see what happens. In this fifth file I have removed the region column. So the region column is no longer present in this file. And let's drop that file in and let's see what happens. So let's go to Azure and then upload again more data and let's drop in that fifth file there and let's upload that and now we have that there and let's again wait for a while so that the shortcut file transformation will process the data. And let's actually use this monitoring feature here to see what happens with the job run when we run that and we don't have that column present there. Now that job is actually running and we can see that it is in progress so we should have that data processed soon or see does it fail. And now that job has completed and we can see that it actually succeeded. So let's refresh our data and let's see what has happened there. As we can see we cannot see any rows for this 5th of September. But I think this is just a bug right now. Because this is a preview feature probably not everything is perfect yet. And I think the correct way to handle this would be that we would see a failure in that shortcut monitoring tab. Now let's try to upload one more file. In this file I have changed the delimiter to be semicolon instead of comma, but otherwise the file schema should be what the shortcut file transformation is expecting and I haven't removed or added any new columns. So let's add this file in. So let's go to Azure and then we want to upload again more data and then we get the file for the sixth and then we upload and then again let's wait a little while and let's go see the monitoring tab and let's see what happens there. So let's go here and let's refresh this and we can see now six jobs there. We should soon see one more. Now in the monitoring tab we can see that we have one job running. Let's see what happens with this job when we have that incorrect delimiter there. 
again the job succeeded and let's go check out our data in our table so let's refresh the table and let's see what kind of data we have here do we have the rows for that sixth day no we don't so the same case as with the removed column that the job will actually succeed but we don't get any data and now I want to cover a few additional things about these shortcut file transformations, like what happens under the hood when those files are processed. But before we do that, I would like you to tell you about this website called certiace.com that offers free practice questions to different Microsoft certification exams. And all of the questions in this website are custom made, and I'm one of the co-founders of this website. So after watching this video, go check out certiace.com. So, how does this shortcut file transformation handle the logic which files have been deleted? We can actually change this table view to the file view and we can see how does this delta table look under the hood. As we can see, this delta table partitions the data based on the file, so we get one partition for each file. And this way it is able to identify if we no longer have that file in the source, it is able to come up with the logic that now we can delete those rows. This is a quite nice setup, but this causes some problems in some cases. Because when you have partitions like this, and then you would have ton of small files, this delta table would be very fragmented. Because this means that you would then have a ton of individual parquet files in these different partitions. And reading and using that delta table wouldn't be super efficient because of that fragmentation. But this is something that you just have to keep in mind when using these shortcut file transformations in cases where you have ton of files. Also, another thing that I want to mention that when we open up this monitoring tab here, we can see that it runs these Spark jobs when processing the data. And starting these Spark jobs every time we process data with shortcut file transformations can be actually quite heavy on the capacity, which means that these shortcut file transformations are not very capacity friendly. So keep that in mind if you are planning to use ton of these shortcut file transformations when ingesting your data. Also, like said, shortcut file transformations are in preview and we have some limitations here. For example, now the major limitation is that this only works with the CSV files. And then we have some other limitations that we also cover, like the schema drift isn't supported. And also we cannot like manipulate the data in that delta table that we are using as a shortcut file transformation target. And then finally, these shortcut file transformations are currently only supported in Lakehouse and not in other data stores in Fabric. But yeah, overall, I would say that these shortcut file transformations are a very welcomed feature in Fabric. Of course, that support only for CSV files can be a major showstopper in many cases, but I think eventually they will expand support to other file types as well. And I think this is all that I wanted to cover here today. Now, I thank you for watching and see you in the next video.